Wikipedia Audio An entheogen is any psychoactive substance that induces a spiritual experience and is aimed at spiritual development. This terminology is often chosen to contrast with recreational use of the same drugs. For example, entheogens are used by curanderos to heal people but also by malevolent sorcerers to allegedly steal their energy. The religious, shamanic, or spiritual significance of entheogens is well established in anthropological and modern contexts. Entheogens have traditionally been used to supplement many diverse practices geared towards achieving transcendence, including white and black magic, sensory deprivation, divinatory, meditation, yoga, prayer, trance, rituals, chanting hymns like peyote songs, and drumming. In the 1960s the hippie movement escalated its use to psychedelic art, binaural beats, sensory deprivation tanks, music, and rave parties. Entheogens have been used by indigenous peoples for thousands of years. Some countries have legislation that allows for traditional entheogen use. However, in the mid-20th century, after the discovery of LSD, and the intervention of psychedelic therapy, the term entheogen, invented in 1979, later became an umbrella term used to include artificial drugs, alternative medical treatment, and spiritual practices, whether or not in a formal religious or traditional structure. History Entheogens have been used in a ritualized context for thousands of years. R. Gordon Wasson and Giorgio Samorini have proposed several examples of the cultural use of entheogens that are found in the archaeological record. Evidence for the first use of entheogens may come from Tassili, Algeria, with a cave painting of a mushroom man, dating to 8000 BP. Hemp seeds discovered by archaeologists at Pizarik suggest early ceremonial practices by the Scythians occurred during the 5th to 2nd century BC, confirming previous historical reports by Herodotus. In proportion to other effects, changes in thought, perception, and mood should predominate, intellectual or memory impairment should be minimal, Stupor, narcosis, or excessive stimulation should not be an integral effect, autonomic nervous system side effects should be minimal, and, addictive craving should be absent. With the advent of organic chemistry, there now exist many synthetic drugs with similar psychoactive properties, many derived from the aforementioned plants. Many pure active compounds with psychoactive properties have been isolated from these respective organisms and chemically synthesized, including mescaline, psilocybin, DMT, salvinorin A, ibogaine, ergin, and musimol. Semi-synthetic and synthetic drugs have also been developed. Alexander Shulgin developed hundreds of entheogens in PiHKAL and TiHKAL. Most of the drugs in PiHKAL are synthetic. Entheogens used by movements include biotas like peyote, extracts like ayahuasca, the semi-synthetic drug LSD, and synthetic drugs like DPT and 2CB. Both Santo Dame and Unia Pondo do Vegetal now have members and churches throughout the world. Psychedelic therapy refers to therapeutic practices involving the use of psychedelic drugs, particularly serotonergic psychedelics such as LSD, psilocybin, DMT, mescaline, and 2CI, primarily to assist psychotherapy. Whether the person has a claim involving a sincere religious belief, and, whether the government action is a substantial burden on the persona Euro trademark's ability to act on that belief. 
MAPS has pursued a number of other research studies examining the effects of psychedelics administered to human subjects. These studies include, but are not limited to, studies of ayahuasca, DMT, ibogaine, ketamine, LSA, LSD, MDE, MDMA, mescaline, peyote, psilocybin, salvia divinorum, and conducted multi-drug studies as well as cross-cultural and meta-analysis research. L. E. Hollister's criteria for identifying a drug as hallucinogenic are that it is acting in furtherance of a compelling state interest, and, that it has pursued that interest in the manner least restrictive, or least burdensome, to religion. Ancient Times Drugs, including some that cause physical dependence, have been used with entheogenic intention, mostly in ancient times, like alcohol. Common recreational drugs that cause chemical dependence have a history of entheogenic use, perhaps because their users could not access traditional entheogens, as shamans, considering non-visioning uses of their entheogens as hedonistic, were very secretive with them. Alcohol has sometimes been invested with religious significance. In ancient Celtic religion, Sucellus, or Sucellos was the god of agriculture, forests and alcoholic drinks of the Gauls. Ninkasi is the ancient Sumerian tutelary goddess of beer. In the ancient Greco-Roman religion, Dionysus was the god of the grape harvest, winemaking, and wine, of ritual madness and ecstasy, of merrymaking and theater. The original rite of Dionysus is associated with a wine cult and he may have been worshipped as early as C1500 Euro 1100 BC by Mycenaean Greeks. The Dionysian mysteries were a ritual of ancient Greece and Rome which used intoxicants and other trance-inducing techniques to remove inhibitions and social constraints, liberating the individual to return to a natural state. In his laws, Plato said that alcoholic drinking parties should be the basis of any educational system, because the alcohol allows relaxation of otherwise fixed views. The symposium was a dramatized account of a drinking party where the participants debated the nature of love. In the Homeric hymn to Demeter, a cup of wine is offered to Demeter which she refuses, instead insisting upon a potion of barley, water, and glycon, known as the ceremonial drink kaiken, an essential part of the mysteries. The potion has been hypothesized to be an ergot derivative from barley, similar to LSD. Egyptian pictographs clearly show wine as a finished product around 4000 BC. Osiris, the god who invented beer and brewing, was worshipped throughout the country. The ancient Egyptians made at least 24 types of wine and 17 types of beer. These beverages were used for pleasure, nutrition, rituals, medicine, and payments. They were also stored in the tombs of the deceased for use in the afterlife. The Osirian mysteries paralleled the Dionysian, according to contemporary Greek and Egyptian observers. Spirit possession involved liberation from civilization's rules and constraints. It celebrated that which was outside civilized society and a return to the source of being, which would later assume mystical overtones. It also involved escape from the socialized personality and ego into an ecstatic, deified state or the primal herd. 1950s A Euro Present Religious Movements Some scholars have postulated that pagan religions actively promoted alcohol and drunkenness as a means of fostering fertility. Alcohol was believed to increase sexual desire and make it easier to approach another person for sex. The drug melange in Frank Herbert S. Dune Universe acts as both an entheogen and an addictive geriatric medicine. 
control of the supply of melange was crucial to the empire, as it was necessary for, among other things, faster than light navigation, consumption of the imaginary mushroom Anakai as the entheogen underlying the creation of Christianity is the premise of Philip K. Dick's last novel, The Transmigration of Timothy Archer, a theme that seems to be inspired by John Allegro's book, Aldous Huxley's final novel, Island depicted a fictional psychoactive mushroom a euro termed moksha medicine a euro used by the people of Pala in rites of passage, such as the transition to adulthood and at the end of life, Bruce Sterling's Holy Fire novel refers to the religion in the future as a result of entheogens, used freely by the population, in Stephen King's The Dark Tower, The Gunslinger, Book 1 of the Dark Tower series, the main character receives guidance after taking mescaline. The Alastair Reynolds novel Absolution Gap features a moon under the control of a religious government that uses neurological viruses to induce religious faith, a critical examination of the ethical and societal implications and relevance of entheogenic experiences can be found in Daniel Waterman and Casey William Hardison's book Entheogens, Society and Law, Towards a Politics of Consciousness, Autonomy and Responsibility. This book includes a controversial analysis of the term entheogen arguing that Wasson etal were mystifying the effects of the plants and traditions it refers to, the book Orange Sunshine and the Psychedelic Sunrise covers the continuum of life-to-death experiences from a personal and existential perspective, with an emphasis on spiritual transcendence, a psychedelic experience. Psychedelic Therapy Controversial Entheogens Alcohol Ancient Religions Modern Religions Chagyam Trungpa Rinpoche introduced mindful drinking to the West when he fled Tibet. The present-day Arabic word for alcohol appears in the Quran as U degree UULAL, properly meaning spirit or demon in the sense of the thing that gives the wine its headiness. Many Christian denominations use wine in the Eucharist or communion and permit alcohol consumption in moderation. Other denominations use unfermented grape juice in communion, they either voluntarily abstain from alcohol or prohibit it outright. Kava Culture Judaism uses wine on Shabbat and some holidays for Kiddush as well as more extensively in the Passover ceremony and other religious ceremonies. The secular consumption of alcohol is allowed. Some Jewish texts, e.g., the Talmud, encourage moderate drinking on holidays in order to make the occasion more joyous. Baha'is are forbidden to drink alcohol or to take drugs unless prescribed by doctors. Accordingly, the sale and trafficking of such substances is also forbidden. Smoking is discouraged but not prohibited. Kava cultures are the religious and cultural traditions of Western Oceania which consume kava. There are similarities in the use of kava between the different cultures, but each one also has its own traditions. Entheogens have been used by individuals to pursue spiritual goals such as divination, ego death, egolessness, faith healing, psychedelic therapy and spiritual formation. Don Alejandro taught me that the visionary experiences are much more important than the plants and drugs that produce them. He no longer needed to take the vision-inducing plants for his journeys. There are also instances where people have been given entheogens without their knowledge or consent, as well as attempts to use such drugs in other contexts, such as cursing, psychochemical weaponry, psychological torture, brainwashing and mind control. CIA experiments with LSD were used in Project MKUltra, 
and controversial entheogens like alcohol are often mentioned in context of bread and circuses. In some areas, there are purported malevolent sorcerers who masquerade as real shamans and who entice tourists to drink ayahuasca in their presence. Shamans believe one of the purposes for this is to steal one's energy and slash or power, of which they believe every person has a limited stockpile. Usage The Native American church is also known as peyoteism and peyote religion. Peyoteism is a Native American religion characterized by mixed traditional as well as Protestant beliefs and by sacramental use of the entheogen peyote. The Peyote Way Church of God believe that peyote is a holy sacrament, when taken according to our sacramental procedure and combined with a holistic lifestyle. Use and Abuse Some religions forbid, discourage, or restrict the drinking of alcoholic beverages. These include Islam, Jainism, the Baha'i Faith, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, the Seventh day Adventist Church, the Church of Christ, Scientist, the United Pentecostal Church International, Theravada, most Mahayana schools of Buddhism, some Protestant denominations of Christianity, some sects of Taoism, and Hinduism. The Pali Canon, the scripture of Theravada Buddhism, depicts refraining from alcohol as essential to moral conduct because intoxication causes a loss of mindfulness. The fifth of the five precepts states, Sura Mireya Mahyapamada superscript 1a superscript 1 ha na verma superscript 1a sikapada superscript 1 samadhiya me. In English, I undertake to refrain from Mireya and Mahya to heedless intoxication. Although the fifth precept only names a specific wine and cider, this has traditionally been interpreted to mean all alcoholic beverages. Technically, this prohibition does also not even include light to moderate drinking, only to the point of drunkenness. It also doesn't include other mind-altering drugs, but Buddhist tradition includes all intoxicants. The canon does not suggest that alcohol is evil but believes that the carelessness produced by intoxication creates bad karma. Therefore, any drug that affects one's mindfulness be considered by some to be covered by this prohibition. Religious Use Black Magic Peyoteism Many Christian denominations disapprove of the use of most illicit drugs. The early history of the Church, however, was filled with a variety of drug use, recreational and otherwise. The primary advocate of a religious use of cannabis plant in early Judaism was Sula Bennett, also called Sarah Baini Tawa, a Polish anthropologist who claimed in 1967 that the plant cannabism times o degree times o times dash times o superscript one times copyright o times times mentioned five times in the Hebrew Bible, and used in the holy anointing oil of the book of Exodus, was in fact cannabis. The Ethiopian Zion Coptic Church confirmed it as a possible valid interpretation. The lexicons of Hebrew and dictionaries of plants of the Bible such as by Michael Zohari, Hans Arne Jensen and James A. Duke and others identify the plant in question as either Acorus calamus or Symbopagon citratus. Cannabism is listed as an incense in the Old Testament. Rabbi Zalman Schachter Shalomi and Richard Alpert were influential early Jewish explorers of the connections between hallucinogenics and spirituality, from the early 1960s onwards. It is generally held by academics specializing in the archaeology and paleobotany of ancient Israel, and those specializing in the lexicography of the Hebrew Bible that cannabis is not documented or mentioned in early Judaism.
Against this some popular writers have argued that there is evidence for religious use of cannabis in the Hebrew Bible, although this hypothesis and some of the specific case studies have been widely dismissed as erroneous, others continue. According to the Living Torah, cannabis may have been one of the ingredients of the holy anointing oil mentioned in various sacred Hebrew texts. The herb of interest is most commonly known as cannabosum. This is mentioned several times in the Old Testament as a bartering material, incense, and an ingredient in holy anointing oil used by the high priest of the temple. Although Chris Bennett's research in this area focuses on cannabis, he mentions evidence suggesting use of additional visionary plants such as henbane, as well. The Septuagint translates cannabosum as calamus, and this translation has been propagated unchanged to most later translations of the Old Testament. However, Polish anthropologist Sula Bennett published etymological arguments that the Aramaic word for hemp can be read as cannabis and appears to be a cognate to the modern word cannabis, with the root gone meaning reed or hemp and bosom meaning fragrant. Both cannabis and calamus are fragrant, reed-like plants containing psychotropic compounds. In his research, Professor Dan Merker points to significant evidence of an awareness within the Jewish mystical tradition recognizing manna as an entheogen, thereby substantiating with rabbinic texts theories advanced by the superficial biblical interpretations of Terence McKenna. R. Gordon Wasson and other ethnomycologists. Although philologist John Marco Allegro has suggested that the self-revelation and healing abilities attributed to the figure of Jesus may have been associated with the effects of the plant medicines, this evidence is dependent on pre-Septuagint interpretation of Torah and Tanakh. Allegro was the only non-Catholic appointed to the position of translating the Dead Sea Scrolls. His extrapolations are often the object of scorn due to Allegro's non-mainstream theory of Jesus as a mythological personification of the essence of a psychoactive sacrament. Furthermore, they conflict with the position of the Catholic Church with regard to transubstantiation and the teaching involving valid matter, form, and drug a euro that of bread and wine. Allegro's book The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross relates the development of language to the development of myths, religions, and cultic practices in world cultures. Allegro believed he could prove, through etymology, that the roots of Christianity, as of many other religions, lay in fertility cults, and that cult practices, such as ingesting visionary plants to perceive the mind of God, persisted into the early Christian era, and to some unspecified extent into the 13th century with reoccurrences in the 18th century and mid-20th century, as he interprets the plain Kuralt Chapel's fresco to be an accurate depiction of the ritual ingestion of Ammonita. Muscaria as the Eucharist the historical picture portrayed by the Entheos Journal is of fairly widespread use of visionary plants in early Christianity and the surrounding culture, with the gradual reduction of use of entheogens in Christianity. R. Gordon Wasson's book Soma prints a letter from art historian Erwin Panofsky asserting that art scholars are aware of many mushroom trees in Christian art. The question of the extent of visionary plant use throughout the history of Christian practice has barely been considered yet by academic or independent scholars. The question of whether visionary plants were used in pre-Theodosius Christianity is distinct from evidence that indicates the extent to which visionary plants were utilized or forgotten in later Christianity, including heretical or quasi-Christian groups and the question of other groups such as elites or laity within Orthodox Catholic practice. Daniel Merker at the University of Toronto contends that a minority of Christian hermits and mystics could possibly have used entheogens, in conjunction with fasting, meditation, and prayer. According to R.C. 
Parker, the use of entheogens in the Vajrayana tradition has been documented by such scholars as Ronald M. Davidson, William George Stablin, Bolksus Ciclos, David B. Gray, Benoitosh Bhattacharya, Shashivuzan Das Gupta, Francesca Fremantle, Shinichi Suda, David Gordon White, Rene Nebeski Wojakowicz, James Francis Hartzell, Edward Todd Fenner, Ian Baker, Dr. Pasang Yantan Area and numerous others. These scholars have established entheogens were used in Vajrayana as well as in Tantric Saivite traditions. The major entheogens in the Vajrayana Anuttarayaga Tantra tradition are cannabis and datura which were used in various pills, ointments, and elixirs. Several tantras within Vajrayana specifically mention these entheogens and their use, including the Lagu Samvara Tantra, Samputa Tantra, Samvaradeya Tantra, Mahakala Tantra, Guya Samaha Tantra, Vajra Mahabharava Tantra, and the Krishnayamari Tantra. In the Kakre Sa superscript Tvanvara Tantra, the use of entheogens is coupled with mediation practices such as the use of a mandala of the Harika meditation deity and visualization practices which identify the Udham's external body and mandala with one's own body and internal mandala. It has also been proposed by Scott Hajasek Dobberstein that the Ammonita muscaria mushroom was used by the Tantric Buddhist Mahasiddha tradition of the 8th to 12th century. In the West, some modern Buddhist teachers have written on the usefulness of psychedelics. The Buddhist magazine Tricycle devoted their entire fall 1996 edition to this issue. Some teachers such as Jack Cornfield have acknowledged the possibility that psychedelics could complement Buddhist practice, bring healing and help people understand their connection with everything which could lead to compassion. Cornfield warns however that addiction can still be a hindrance. Other teachers such as Michelle McDonald Smith expressed views which saw entheogens as not conductive to Buddhist practice. Entheogens have been used in various ways, e.g., as part of established religious rituals, as aids for personal spiritual development, as recreational drugs, and for medical and therapeutic use. The use of entheogens in human cultures is nearly ubiquitous throughout recorded history. Naturally occurring entheogens such as psilocybin and DMT, were, for the most part, discovered and used by older cultures, as part of their spiritual and religious life, as plants and agents that were respected or in some cases revered for generations and may be a tradition that predates all modern religions as a sort of proto-religious rite. One of the most widely used entheogens is cannabis. Entheogenic use of cannabis has been used in regions such as China, Europe, and India, and, in some cases, for thousands of years. It has also appeared as a part of religions and cultures such as the Rastafari movement, the sadhus of Hinduism, the Scythians, Sufi Islam, and others. The best known entheogen using culture of Africa is the Buddhists, who used a preparation of the root bark of Tabernanthiboga. Although the ancient Egyptians may have been using the sacred blue lily plant in some of their religious rituals or just symbolically, it has been suggested that Egyptian religion once revolved around the ritualistic ingestion of the far more psychoactive psilocybe cubensis mushroom, and that the Egyptian white crown, triple crown, and atef crown were evidently designed to represent pin stages of this mushroom. There is also evidence for the use of psilocybin mushrooms in Ivory Coast. Numerous other plants used in shamanic ritual in Africa such as Silene Capensis sacred to the Kosa, are yet to be investigated by Western science. A recent revitalization has occurred in the study of Southern African psychoactives and entheogens.
The artificial drug 2CB is interestingly used as entheogen by the Sangoma, Nyanga, and Amagkarha people over their traditional plants, they refer to the chemical as Ubulahu na Mathotholo, which roughly translates to medicine of the singing ancestors. Entheogens have played a pivotal role in the spiritual practices of most American cultures for millennia. The first American entheogen to be subject to scientific analysis was the peyote cactus. For his part, one of the founders of modern ethnobotany, the late Richard Evans Schultz of Harvard University documented the ritual use of peyote cactus among the Kiowa, who live in what became Oklahoma. While it was used traditionally by many cultures of what is now Mexico, in the 19th century its use spread throughout North America, replacing the deadly toxic mescal bean who are questioned to be an entheogen at all. Other well-known entheogens used by Mexican cultures include the alcoholic Aztec sacrament, pulque, ritual tobacco, psilocybin mushrooms, morning glories, and salvia divinorum. Indigenous peoples of South America employ a wide variety of entheogens. Better known examples include ayahuasca among indigenous peoples of Peruvian Amazon. Other entheogens include San Pedro cactus, Peruvian torch cactus, and various DMT snuffs, such as Epina, Vilca, and Yapo. The familiar tobacco plant, when used uncured in large doses in shamanic contexts, also serves as an entheogen in South America. Also, a tobacco that contains higher nicotine content, and therefore smaller doses required, called Nicotiana rustica was commonly used. Entheogens also play an important role in contemporary religious movements such as the Rastafari movement and the Church of the Universe. Datura Ritii is sacred to some Native Americans and has been used in ceremonies and rites of passage by Chumash, Tongva, and others. Among the Chumash, when a boy was eight years old, his mother would give him a preparation of Momoi to drink. This supposed spiritual challenge should help the boy develop the spiritual well-being that is required to become a man. Not all of the boys undergoing this ritual survived. Momoi was also used to enhance spiritual well-being among adults. For instance, during a frightening situation, such as when seeing a coyote walk like a man, a leaf of Momoi was sucked to help keep the soul in the body. The indigenous peoples of Siberia have used Ammonita muscaria as an entheogen. In Hinduism, Datura stramonium and cannabis have been used in religious ceremonies, although the religious use of Datura is not very common, as the primary alkaloids are strong deliriants, which causes serious intoxication with unpredictable effects. Also, the ancient drink Soma, mentioned often in the Vedas, appears to be consistent with the effects of an entheogen. In his 1967 book, Wasson argues that Soma was Ammonita muscaria. The active ingredient of Soma is presumed by some to be ephedrine, an alkaloid with stimulant properties derived from the Soma plant, identified as ephedra pachyclata. However, there are also arguments to suggest that Soma could have also been Syrian rue, cannabis, Atropa belladonna, or some combination of any of the above plants. Fermented honey, known in Northern Europe as mead, was an early entheogen in Aegean civilization, predating the introduction of wine, which was the more familiar entheogen of the reborn Dionysus and the Menads. Its religious uses in the Aegean world are bound up with the mythology of the bee. Dacians were known to use cannabis in their religious and important life ceremonies, proven by discoveries of large clay pots with burnt cannabis seeds in ancient tombs and religious shrines. Also, 
local oral folklore and myths tell of ancient priests that dreamed with gods and walked in the smoke. Their names, as transmitted by Herodotus, were Capnobatai which in Dacian was supposed to mean the ones that walk in the clouds. The growth of Roman Christianity also saw the end of the 2,000-year-old tradition of the Eleusinian Mysteries, the initiation ceremony for the cult of Demeter and Persephone involving the use of a drug known as Kykon. The term Ambrosia is used in Greek mythology in a way that is remarkably similar to the Soma of the Hindus as well. A theory that natural occurring gases like ethylene used by inhalation may have played a role in divinatory ceremonies at Delphi in classical Greece received popular press attention in the early 2000s, yet has not been conclusively proven. Mushroom consumption is part of the culture of Europeans in general, with particular importance to Slavic and Baltic peoples. Some academics consider that using psilocybin, and or musimol containing mushrooms was an integral part of the ancient culture of the Rus people. It has been suggested that the ritual use of small amounts of Syrian rue is an artifact of its ancient use in higher doses as an entheogen. Philologist John Marco Allegro has argued in his book The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross that early Jewish and Christian cultic practice was based on the use of Ammonita muscaria, which was later forgotten by its adherents. Allegro's hypothesis is that Ammonita use was sacred knowledge kept only by high figures to hide the true beginnings of the Christian cult seems supported by his own view that the plain Kuralt chapel shows evidence of Christian Ammonita use in the 13th century. In general, indigenous Australians are thought not to have used entheogens, although there is a strong barrier of secrecy surrounding Aboriginal shamanism, which has likely limited what has been told to outsiders. A plant that the Australian Aboriginals used to ingest is called pitchery, which is said to have a similar effect to that of coca. Pitchery was made from the bark of the shrub Duboisia myoperoids. This plant is now grown commercially and is processed to manufacture an eye medication. There are no known uses of entheogens by the Maori of New Zealand aside from a variant species of cava. Natives of Papua New Guinea are known to use several species of entheogenic mushrooms. Cava or Cava Cava has been cultivated for at least 3,000 years by a number of Pacific Island dwelling peoples. Historically, most Polynesian, many Melanesian, and some Micronesian cultures have ingested the psychoactive pulverized root, typically taking it mixed with water. Much traditional usage of kava, though somewhat suppressed by Christian missionaries in the 19th and 20th centuries, is thought to facilitate contact with the spirits of the dead, especially relatives and ancestors. Studies such as Timothy Leary's Marsh Chapel experiment and Roland Griffith's psilocybin studies at Johns Hopkins have documented reports of mystical-slash-spiritual-slash-religious experiences from participants who were administered psychoactive drugs in controlled trials. Ongoing research is limited due to widespread drug prohibition. Notable early testing of the entheogenic experience includes the Marsh Chapel experiment, conducted by physician and theology doctoral candidate, Walter Pank, under the supervision of Timothy Leary and the Harvard Psilocybin Project. In this double-blind experiment, volunteer graduate school divinity students from the Boston area almost all claimed to have had profound religious experiences subsequent to the ingestion of pure psilocybin. In 2006, a more rigorously controlled experiment was conducted at Johns Hopkins University, and yielded similar results. To date there is little peer-reviewed research on this subject due to ongoing drug prohibition and the difficulty of getting approval from institutional review boards. Furthermore, 
scientific studies on entheogens present some significant challenges to investigators, including philosophical questions relating to ontology, epistemology, and objectivity. Prohibition Peyote is listed by the United States DEA as a Schedule I controlled substance. However, practitioners of the Peyote Way Church of God, a Native American religion, perceive the regulations regarding the use of peyote as discriminating, leading to religious discrimination issues regarding about the U.S. policy towards drugs. As the result of Peyote Way Church of God v. Thornburg the American Indian Religious Freedom Act of 1978 was passed. This federal statute allow the traditional Indian religious use of the peyote sacrament, exempting only use by Native American persons. Other jurisdictions have similar statutory exemptions in reaction to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in Employment Division v. Smith. 494 U.S. 872, which held that laws prohibiting the use of peyote that do not specifically exempt religious use nevertheless do not violate the Free Exercise Clause of the First Amendment. Between 2011 and 2012, the Australian federal government was considering changes to the Australian Criminal Code that would classify any plants containing any amount of DMT as controlled plants. DMT itself was already controlled under current laws. The proposed changes included other similar blanket bans for other substances, such as a ban on any and all plants containing mescaline or ephedrine. The proposal was not pursued after political embarrassment on realization that this would make the official floral emblem of Australia, Acacia pycnantha, illegal. The Therapeutic Goods Administration and Federal Authority had considered a motion to ban the same, but this was withdrawn in May 2012. In 1963 in Sherbert v. Werner the Supreme Court established the Sherbert test, which consists of four criteria that are used to determine if an individual's right to religious free exercise has been violated by the government. The test is as follows. For the individual, the court must determine. If these two elements are established, then the government must prove. Judaism and Christianity this test was eventually all but eliminated in Employment Division v. Smith 494 U.S. 872, but was resurrected by Congress in the Federal Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. In City of Born v. Flores, 521 U.S. 507 and Gonzales v. O Centro Esperita Benefic and Unia Poundo do Vegetal, 546 U.S. 418, the RFRA was held to trespass on state sovereignty, and application of the RFRA was essentially limited to federal law enforcement. Buddhism As of 2001, Arizona, Idaho, New Mexico, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Texas had enacted so-called minirfras. Although entheogens are taboo and most of them are officially prohibited in Christian and Islamic societies, their ubiquity and prominence in the spiritual traditions of various other cultures is unquestioned. The spirit, for example, need not be chemical, as is the case with the ivy and the olive, and yet the god was felt to be within them, nor need its possession be considered something detrimental, like drugged, hallucinatory, or delusionary, but possibly instead an invitation to knowledge or whatever good the god's spirit had to offer. Cultural Use Africa Most of the well-known modern examples, such as peyote, psilocybin mushrooms, 
and morning glories are from the native cultures of the Americas. However, it has also been suggested that entheogens played an important role in ancient Indo-European culture, for example by inclusion in the ritual preparations of the Soma, the pressed juice that is the subject of Book 9 of the Rig Veda. Soma was ritually prepared and drunk by priests and initiates and elicited a paean in the Rig Veda that embodies the nature of an entheogen. Splendid by Law Declaring law, truth speaking, truthful in thy works, announcing faith, King Soma. O Pavamana, place me in that deathless, undecaying world wherein the light of heaven is set, and everlasting luster shines. Make me immortal in that realm where happiness and transports, where joy and felicities combine. The Kaikan that preceded initiation into the Eleusinian Mysteries is another entheogen, which was investigated by Karl Kara Kopyrightny, in Eleusis, archetypal image of mother and daughter. Other entheogens in the ancient Near East and the Aegean include the Opium Poppy, Datura, and the unidentified lotus eaten by the lotus eaters in the Odyssey and Narcissus. Americas Asia Europe Middle East Oceania Research Religious discrimination Legal status of entheogens Australia United States Classical mythology and cults Assassins Etymology Literature According to Ruck, Ion, and Staples, the familiar shamanic entheogen that the Indo-Europeans brought knowledge of was Ammonita muscaria. It could not be cultivated, thus it had to be found, which suited it to a nomadic lifestyle. When they reached the world of the Caucasus and the Aegean, the Indo-Europeans encountered wine, the entheogen of Dionysus, who brought it with him from his birthplace in the mythical Nyssa, when he returned to claim his Olympian birthright. The Indo-European Proto-Greeks recognized it as the entheogen of Zeus, and their own traditions of shamanism, the Ammonita and the pressed juice of Soma a Euro but better, since no longer unpredictable and wild, the way it was found among the Hyperboreans, as befit their own assimilation of agrarian modes of life, the entheogen was now cultivable. Robert Graves, in his foreword to the Greek myths, hypothesis is that the ambrosia of various pre-Hellenic tribes was Ammonita muscaria and perhaps psilocybin mushrooms of the Panaeolus genus. Ammonita was divine food, according to Ruck and Staples, not something to be indulged in or sampled lightly, not something to be profaned. It was the food of the gods, their ambrosia, and it mediated between the two realms. It is said that Tantalus's crime was inviting commoners to share his ambrosia. The entheogen is believed to offer godlike powers in many traditional tales, including immortality. The failure of Gilgamesh in retrieving the plant of immortality from beneath the waters teaches that the blissful state cannot be taken by force or guile, when Gilgamesh lay on the bank, exhausted from his heroic effort, the serpent came and ate the plant. Another attempt at subverting the natural order is told in a strangely metamorphosed myth, in which natural roles have been reversed to suit the Hellenic world view. The Alexandrian Apollodorus relates how Gaia, Mother Earth herself, has supported the Titans in their battle with the Olympian intruders. The giants have been defeated. When GE learned of this, she sought a drug that would prevent their destruction even by mortal hands. But Zeus barred the appearance of Eos, Selene, and Helios, and chopped up the drug himself before GE could find it.
The legends of the assassins had much to do with the training and instruction of Nazari Fidaas, famed for their public missions during which they often gave their lives to eliminate adversaries. The Tales of the Fitha Euro Trademark is a Euro Trademark training collected from anti-Ismaili historians and Orientalists writers were confounded and compiled in Marco Polo Euro Trademark's account, in which he described a secret garden of paradise. After being drugged, the Ismaili devotees were said be taken to a paradise-like garden filled with attractive young maidens and beautiful plants in which these Fitha Euro trademark is would awaken. Here, they were told by an old man that they were witnessing their place in paradise and that should they wish to return to this garden permanently, they must serve the Nazari cause. So went the tale of the old man in the mountain assembled by Marco Polo and accepted by Joseph von Hammerpergstall, a prominent Orientalist writer responsible for much of the spread of this legend. Until the 1930s, von Hammer a Euro trademark s retelling of the assassin legends served as the standard account of the Nazaris across Europe. The neologism entheogen was coined in 1979 by a group of ethnobotanists and scholars of mythology. The term is derived from two words of ancient Greek, a one-fourth i one-half i i i i and i superscript three i i one-half i i plus or minus i superscript one. The adjective entheos translates to English as full of the god, inspired, possessed and is the root of the English word enthusiasm. The Greeks used it as a term of praise for poets and other artists. Genes tie means to come into being. Thus, an entheogen is a drug that causes one to become inspired or to experience feelings of inspiration, often in a religious or spiritual manner. Entheogen was coined as a replacement for the terms hallucinogen and psychedelic. Hallucinogen was popularized by Aldous Huxley's experiences with mescaline, which were published as The Doors of Perception in 1954. Psychedelic, in contrast, is a Greek neologism for mind manifest, and was coined by psychiatrist Humphrey Osmond. Huxley was a volunteer in experiments Osmond was conducting on mescaline. Ruck Etal argued that the term hallucinogen was inappropriate owing to its etymological relationship to words relating to delirium and insanity. The term psychedelic was also seen as problematic, owing to the similarity in sound to words pertaining to psychosis and also due to the fact that it had become irreversibly associated with various connotations of 1960s pop culture. In modern usage entheogen may be used synonymously with these terms, or it may be chosen to contrast with recreational use of the same drugs. The meanings of the term entheogen were formally defined by Ruck Etl. In a strict sense, only those vision-producing drugs that can be shown to have figured in shamanic or religious rites would be designated entheogens, but in a looser sense, the term could also be applied to other drugs, both natural and artificial, that induce alterations of consciousness similar to those documented for ritual ingestion of traditional entheogens. Many works of literature have described entheogen use, some of those are Enthes, Wicca